Hey, Mark Warnke, uh, packoats.com. It is spring, and there are a lot of you right now that are scratching your head saying, wow, my boys are two years old or they're three years old. We need to start investing in some saddles and panniers. This is the most expensive part of your pack goading career, and it will be the most important decision you make. Um, other than genetics and education. But genetics are number one, getting the right goats. Number two is getting the right saddle. If I were to take you on a one or two mile hike, you could make that hike in any pair of boots. But if I take you on 12 miles and you're in a pair of boots that are a size too small, you just ain't gonna make it. And if you're asking your goats to carry loads with a saddle that doesn't fit them, it's the same thing. You'll notice that they won't perform. Um, when we finally started inventing saddles and putting saddles on goats. I mean, I went with the aluminum adjustables that, that you know, were supposedly gonna form fit and they tore holes in my goats at, not at mile four, but at mile seven and eight and made them sore and, you know, soak away from saddles and hurt them and they couldn't perform. It, it was never on mile four or day one. It was day three and mile 12. Um, so if you want to be able to have your goats do mileage and you want them to be comfortable, because remember, even if they're not showing it on mile one or four, they're still uncomfortable. And so if you want them to perform and be comfortable, you have to get them a pair of shoes that fit, that are well made, and that's a saddle. So here's my example. This is Slick saddle. Slick is a nice flat-backed La Mancha. This is Noah's saddle. Noah is a 55-gallon drum bower cross. Um, now I have a tendency to breed towards this because that goat is slimmer lined, but I even have these guys who are very boxy. Slick is actually a more boxy goat where Merciless is more A-frame, where Noah is round and 55 gallon drone. If you don't have a saddle that can sit properly, because the way these pivot points are, there's three pivot points, so front and back. So now this saddle adjusts this way, this way, and then this way and this way. And as a result, if you get a goat that's built big rumen in the back, he's got kind of belly like Chester was, but he's slim on the front, you can actually set that saddle like this and like this. And now you have contact on his entire body. The only saddle this won't fit is a poorly conformed goat with a sway back. Now you're gonna bridge over the top of that sway and the only saddle for that swayback goat out there is a, is a saddle called the Sopris, and it's a soft saddle design. I believe that's the second best saddle on the market. It's tremendous. The problem with it is, is because it's a soft saddle design, you have to have a lot of cinch pressure, and you have to really crank down that cinch on your chest to get that saddle not to spin. But because we have perfect fit, and we have a rigid frame, now the cinch doesn't have to be right around their chest, and it'll stay and you'll never have that saddle spin on you. And that's a bigger deal than you know. When a goat goes to jump a log and he doesn't have his panniers attached, which our cinches are built to have their panniers attached to the cinch when you're in off trail situations like that, what happens is the set of panniers will billow. They jump and they go up in the air and if they get off balance at all, what happens is one of the panniers will go over on the other side and now both are hanging on this side and that saddle will spin and go right underneath his belly. Or he'll get weird adjustment and it'll spin and that can happen really easily without a lot of cinch pressure in a soft saddle design. So now you have to make them uncomfortable for mile after mile by putting enormous amounts of cinch pressure to keep that thing from spinning. Where this one, you need literally almost none. So if you want comfort and fit, and then we start talking about, you know, when, when you run the breast collar across the low throat, and, and this is my classic saddle. This is, this is how most cross bucks are designed. And this is the breast collar. So this is what goes across their throat. So if you can imagine this going across your goat's esophagus, and all you gotta do is press right here and realize how uncomfortable that is, and that's why your goat coughs as he's climbing uphill, because that, that breast collar is hitting him in the esophagus and it's a cough fest on your climb. Whereas opposed with this one in the yoke design, you now have equal pressure and it actually exerts itself on the pectoral girdle, on the, the actual shoulders and that chest region rather than just right here on one pinch point. So that the, 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 the 
The way this thing functions is just incredible. On the other side is the britches. And because this has so many adjustments, you can custom fit. And, and that's one of the largest points on a goat. There's goats that have a rump that's sloped like this. There's ones that are sloped like this. There's that are wide. There's goats that walk really hippy. There's goats that walk forward and do this kind of thing. You can adjust this in all the different ways to custom fit that goat. And it's really hard to do that. At the same time, this is a slick material that allows for this bridging to slide like this rather than chafing and rubbing raw, which is what happens when you run, uh, when you run this type of material on your britching, which you don't want on your britching, which a lot of people in the industry do, is they'll run felt on their britching and the felt will rub their hair off throughout the packing season. So you don't want to have that as well. So between the britching, the yoke, the fit, the durability, and, and, and I'll let you know, I know this thing isn't cheap and it isn't cheap to make good things. It just isn't. I wish I could make it for less. I really do. Just in this aluminum structure here alone, the hardware and the aluminum right here is 127 bucks. Our cost. That's what uh, it costs us. Before we ever make the saddle, we sew a stitch, we buy a thing, we make the pad, we make the sideboard, we put it together, and we try to support our families. It is expensive to make a gear, it just is. It's the same price as a good pair of Kinetrek boots or a good XL Mountain backpack. That's just what good gear costs. Your, des your goat deserves that too, in my opinion. This is our classic saddle. If you're going to only do light loads and short loads, this can work for you. It's the old design. It's how a lot of the cross bucks are made. It has no adjustability. It fits one shape of goat. Keep in mind, if I put this on Noah and we take these pads off, remember Noah's got a round back, right? So Noah, this is gonna sit on him and because he's a 55 gallon drum, the whole saddle is gonna be right here. The only place touching on, on his back is gonna be here. He's gonna have about 15% contact on this saddle. So that means he's gonna have a pressure point riding on that ridge and the whole load is carried on about 15% of this cross buck on both sides. So it, it's, it's uncomfortable, it's the way it is. It's concept that you would think you overcome that with a good pad, but you don't. It still creates, you can actually see how this is, it creates pressure up here. Now as far as pads on the market, these pads are the superior one. Matt designed them before I even knew him. Um, they're really, really well thought out. They're super good, they're affordable. But that's the other thing is don't forget, when you buy this saddle, you always have to buy a pad and that's more money. This one comes with the pad built in. So you have to account for that as well when you're comparing costs on your saddles. The last thing that, oh, and if you're gonna get a cross buck, and you're not gonna do a lot of miles, or this is all you can afford, I understand, I'm not, I'm not judging you. But if you're gonna get a cross buck, this is the only one out there that solves a lot of the issues that cross bucks have on insertion points where the cinch rides across, most of them ride too low, it has a good britching because in this style of a design, you're gonna have a hard time with this saddle wanting to slip forward on you, so you need a really good britching. You need a properly positioned cinch, which is this is the only one on the market that's properly positioned. And then you got your standard breast collar. And luckily goats have more problem with sliding up than they do sliding back. So we were able to make it a little affordable for you doing it that way. Now, if you're light load only, packing a lunch in on a dough, want to load a sleeping bag aside, very minimal needs, then the soft saddle design is the adult soft saddle is the most affordable that's out there. Uh, it gives you your panniers and your saddle together as one package. I, I can't remember what they cost or rent. It's, I think it's 200 and a few bucks. Um, that one is a really great design. But again, please don't try to put more than 25 or 30 pounds in it, 35 absolute max. Um, you can't do long mileage on it because it just, it doesn't sit well long term. It's not made for, you know, huge trekking and heavy use at all. It's made for light loads, low durations, light packing needs, works great for 4-H'ers, um, stuff like that. And then if we talk about the kid trainer, that's even one step lower in terms of how much weight it'll carry. It's fun. It's fun to put good big boy pants on your young goats. 
um, and I like it as well. But if you're getting serious and you're getting ready to buy saddles, I can't tell you how important. If you need to save money on something, I guess save money on your panniers. Don't save money on your saddles, it will bite you in the butt. So, one thing that can be helpful is don't forget if you're getting ready to place a big orders on sanders, saddles, and panniers and do all that stuff, you know, become a Goat Club member. You'll save 10%. Um, there's no obligation. I hope you choose to stick around. It'll give you long-term savings. There's all kinds of good things and we'll teach you lots of good stuff and you get good things by being a Goat Club member. But if that helps you, I'm, I'm glad to try to make it more affordable for you. So. That's it. Um, I hope I wasn't too preachy about that. I do see people still trying to have their goats do some heavy miles in saddles that don't fit properly. Um, I know what that looks like because I've seen it on my own goats. I would encourage you to do your best to get the best equipment you can where the rubber meets the road, which is with the saddle. And I believe we have the best one on the market. So I hope you find that helpful. Mark Mortkey at Goats.com. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>